What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fantasy Files podcast, where we talk about our favorite fantasy series and topics. I'm one of your co-hosts, Spencer, and he'd easily crack the code to get out of my basement if only he could remember the name of the protagonist from Wheel of Time. It's Gabe. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great, Spencer. Just it's, great. It's good to see you. I feel good like I haven't talked to you in a few days. I can't yeah. can't wait to do this. Um, we're joined by the smoothest voice in the business, voice actor Ooh. Adam Gold. Ooh. 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 <laughs> now that's a lot to live up to. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Adam Gold is known by us for his work in the Threadlight Trilogy by Zach Argyle. Uh, we actually have a couple episodes for that series. I'll link them up above wherever they come up in the annotations, somewhere up there. Uh, we'll get to talk to him about his career as a voice actor and just kind of hang out and talk about the industry and books in general. But first, if you're not subscribed, we recommend you do so. We have some really great Creators Corner episodes coming up where we go off topic with other YouTubers and we have some really big names in the BookTube space lined up that you will not want to miss. Not to mention more book reviews and spoiler discussions on the way, so stick around. You can also reach out to us on Twitter and Discord, which are linked below. And yeah, I guess let's uh, let's get right into it. I'm sure we'll talk about reading and whatnot at some point, but let's start with introducing our guest here, Adam Gold. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've been looking forward to this uh, for at least a couple weeks now. I know we're... Yeah. Hoping to do it last week, and I appreciate you guys accommodating. Oh, yeah, um, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm just happy to be here. I was I was really surprised with how fast you said yes. I, I sent that email, and it was like the next day you got back to me, and you were like, oh, I'd love to. And I cannot tell you how many yeah. guests we have on where I am reaching out to them over the course of like six months and being <laughs> yeah. like, Hey, it's like, true. and trying to do the whole song and dance of like, we've interviewed other authors, like, check this out if you <laughs> like that. And like doing like this whole convincing thing. And I, it was so refreshing to get an email back that was like, yes, man, I'd love to do that. I'm like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from, from my, from my seat over here, it's awesome. As far as I'm concerned, it's like, you know, people, if, if people like what you're doing and they appreciate what you're doing, I feel like that is uh, that is such a cool thing to experience on this end of the industry. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I I would love to hear about that. I'd love to hear, you know, what yeah. what things you like, because I want to keep doing that. I, you know, yeah. I, the goal as you know, as a voice actor, as a you know, as a performer is to give you stuff that's going to make you guys happy and, yeah. and like, you know, that's, so that's what it's all about. And I feel like, you know, there, there might be a handful of folks out there who are, you know, well, are they, how, how legit are they? How many, <laughs> yeah. this is worth my time. Sure. And for me, it's like every, you know, as, as long as I have the time, yeah, um, every chance. any, every chance you get is like, I mean, what a cool experience to, you know, right. to talk to people who, who have listened to what you've done, like there yeah. too many uh, fields that you can get to do that. So, that. yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just super stoked to be here and it's very fortuitous that I'm just always working and on <laughs> my email and, <laughs> yeah, and for sure. so, you know, quick turnarounds, uh, quick turnarounds aren't always the case, but, uh, sure. I'm, I'm super glad that I was able to get yours and uh, and get me a slot on here. Yeah, yes. dude. Yeah, we're uh we're actually big fans of yours. We you've come up on the podcast quite a Several few times. times. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially when uh when Zach Argyle was on, he came on to just kind of talk about Threadlight in general. And I and we all like unanimously agreed by the way, but I was like, "Man, I am a straight man but he has the <laughs> sexiest voice <laughs> it's just so good and i got i gotta i gotta dial that one in before, uh, <laughs> yeah. before i record That's I, wish I, could say, I wish yeah. i could say i walk around talking like that but not <laughs> yeah. That yeah i was like uh at the time i was like man he should do like romance books and stuff and then i looked at your credits over the past couple of days i'm like oh he has done romance books that makes sense <laughs> a lot, done a lot of romance books there's a lot of love out there in the airwaves 
<laughs> I never knew when I when I first got into audiobook narration, uh, I never in my wildest dreams knew what the spread of content was going to be. Mm. And then I started doing, you know, what uh, I, I started out on ACX. And so you kind of get to scroll through the projects and see what uh, what genres everyone's looking at and, you know, who's who the authors are and what sorts of series are on the market. And uh, I, I can I can say, I think at least when I was doing that, 70, 75 percent of all of the content that and I don't know if maybe it was just like that I was a good fit for or, you know, that's just all that was out there. But like 70 to 75 percent of all of the stuff that I saw. Good old romance, baby. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it fits, man. I, I think that you have the the perfect voice for it. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> matter of fact, in my uh, I did like a Threadlight spoiler free review and I, I mentioned I'm like Adam Gold, the narrator. I'm like, I don't know what he looks like, but it's probably something like this. And I brought up like a like a picture of like Fabio <laughs> with like the long hair. Oh man, I better start growing my hair out. <laughs> oh, oh man. God. Yeah. This is super that's funny. super, that's super funny. Well, I'll, I'll take Fabio. I'll take Fabio. Right. Yeah. That's a, that's a good looking, that's a good looking, not young man anymore. I know. <laughs> yeah. I age He's, like Fabio. I'll be happy. Right. It, it's so funny when they put him in, like, I'm sure he, he was in like a Super Bowl commercial or something today. Cause he's always, <laughs> he's always in him. He's always in him. So the, the sad, unfortunate reality of YouTube is that as the episode goes on, you know, as we get into closer to the hour and a half, two hour mark, people start dropping off. So at the beginning of the episode, I want to give you the chance to kind of plug where people can follow you. Obviously, Adam <laughs> Gold, you're a voice actor. Um, where can people kind of catch up with you when when they want? <laughs> you know, truth be told, I am uh, I, I've never been a uh, I, I've never been really huge on social media. I'm just I'm, a, I'm usually a pretty private person. Um sure. But uh, if you guys if you guys are interested and if you guys uh, can bear with me because I I'm terrible at posting stuff, um, but I'm trying. I, I it's like a New Year's resolution. I I am always trying to at least get a little better um, at keeping people in the loop because it's kind of like what I was saying earlier, where it's just it's it is really cool to see when you're you know when you're doing it right, and I think a a big way of of being able to see that is you know sharing the stuff with the people that you care about and you know the people yeah. who are interested and um so if you're interested i i think i've got on pretty much all the social media platforms i think it's going to be uh adam gold like at adam gold vo oh, okay i think that's pretty much across the board and uh adam gold vo.com cool Nice. So those are those are the places. Otherwise, uh, every once in a while, <laughs> I might, you know, you're probably going to see stuff before I even know I'm in it. So. Sure, you're yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Gabe, that should be your New Year's resolution to, to get on social media. Yeah, I'm, I'm very similar to you, Adam. I'm, I'm very much a private person. Yeah. I don't don't really do social media at all. I, I don't think I would get on like I'm not going to make one for myself, but I would definitely jump on the the uh, podcast one the I fantasy think. files yeah. One, yeah. yeah 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 i dude i completely gave up like my facebook like my personal facebook i haven't been on there in at least a year besides going on for like the marketplace yeah. and stuff like that uh but I, i've just been on the podcast one on twitter and i'm like this is good i'm like i, I don't need anything <laughs> yeah. else i'm like i don't i don't need the reddit <laughs> i don't need the instagram i don't need any of this other stuff i'm like i'm yeah. fine with you know, talking to my author friends and stuff. That's all I need. So. And that's, I think for me, it's like as a, as a voice actor, I think one of the big things for me is I had, when I was in LA, uh, I started out, I started out in, I guess technically I started out in stunt work and then I moved into film. That's right. This and, is crazy. I yeah. I yeah. So ooh, what a, what a transition. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My, my body at one point was thanking me and now that i just sit on my ass all day uh now i'm having to rethink like oh maybe i should go jump off some building <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh so, yeah you know when i when i started out it was a lot of the folks that i was interacting with in los angeles um it was the 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 self promotion in just like the worst ways just a lot of the people that i was interacting with were just 
you know, every opportunity to, you know, put the spotlight on themselves and to mm -hmm. you know, pat themselves on the back and, you know, give themselves a shout out on somebody else's platform. Yeah. Right. And it just, there was so much of it. And I think it just, it rubbed me the wrong way. And that was something that like, I never wanted to do. I never wanted yeah. to be that person. Um, so I feel like there's, there's a right way of doing it. And I feel like a lot of people do it the right way. I just haven't figured out what the right way is yet for me. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I, I'm, I'm hoping to be in that position. And I think what you've got with the, uh, with the platform, um, you know, with the podcast, I think that's a great approach where it's like, you know, it's not, it's not here to see like, you know, Hey, look what I'm, look at all this cool stuff I'm doing over here. Right. It's like this is, this is my, like, this is my thing. This is my creation. This is my, yeah. this is my business, whatever it might be. And, you know, letting people kind of invest themselves in that. And yes. I yeah. feel like that, yes. that is really cool. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the approach that at some point I would, I would love to be able to do. So, yeah, it's, it's been awesome to, you know, have a lot of, we've had a lot of like big name authors on, and we've also had like small name authors on, and it's always fun to, you know, kind of give them a shout out and give them a platform to kind of promote their stuff because yeah. then we get people reaching out to us like, oh, I, I didn't know about this small little indie book. Like, thank you so much for this. I'm going to buy yeah. it right away. Like just the other day yeah. on uh, on YouTube, somebody commented mm -hmm. and they had just watched uh, the Threadlight review and they were like, I had no idea this was a thing. I just bought it. And that is the best feeling in the world yeah. to, to know that like yeah. you're helping somebody sell their book or whatever, but also like you introduce them to like a new story. I, it's just cool. I love it. Yeah. It's, I mean, and that's exactly right. It's that, it's that sort of like you're doing something right that yeah. is helping somebody else. And like, that's what I would want to see, you know, if I was on social media and I, it sounds like that's what you guys are like, that's the goal. So yeah, well, that's, that's super cool. That That's the cool thing about the Twitter community too. Cause I, I stayed away from Twitter for a long time, Yeah. but then when we started the podcast, it was like, Oh, Twitter is the only place you can go to promote your podcasting. And there's like a big book community over there and stuff. And so once I did that, I realized that a lot of people in the Twitter community are like that, or at least in the the reading community and, and writing community on Twitter. They're all very, uh, you know, always giving shout outs to their friends. And it's just kind of becomes one big you know, one big just, happy family. One big That's happy right. family. Yeah. Right. yeah. But yeah, so you you mentioned that you were a stunt man and I saw this on your website today and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and so yeah, I yeah. I really so our our first question here is about your career and how you got started and kind of your journey as an audio narrator. So let's do that. Do you want to start with kind of the stunt work and how you got yeah. into all that and how you made it to narrating now? Like, that's yeah. wild. Heck yeah. It's been, it has been <laughs> quite, a, quite a journey. So I started out uh, way like rewind the clock way back when uh, first thing I ever wanted to be when I was a kid was a professional wrestler. That was, that awesome. was, my, that was my dream yeah. right there. <laughs> Um, I wanted to be Shawn Michaels Jr. Uh, and that was nice. like, that was my goal. Uh, <laughs> so my parents sat me down one day and, uh, you know, I, I love my parents and they're they're super supportive of what I do. But back then they were they were, you know, giving me a little bit of insight and uh, yeah. kind of stereotypical Jewish parents. And it was, you know, Adam, we love you. You can do whatever you want to do be whatever you want to be as long as you're a doctor or a lawyer right yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so that was that was kind of like my plan going into it all through college um and then my uh i think it was my last year in college uh i had a classmate who was like you know, and when i was younger i did uh i did martial arts i did gymnastics i did you know a lot of a lot of sports and stuff like that um, and so I, I love doing that stuff. And I was, I, like I said, up until my voice acting career, I was always very active and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and my have times changed. Um, <laughs> but back then I was, uh, I was still doing that stuff. And, uh, so my classmate was like, Hey, so my, my husband is, uh, he, you know, they're getting ready to move to Los Angeles and he's going to be leaving his, his job and they need somebody to fill in for him. And I think you're going to be perfect. And I was like, okay, tell me what, uh, what am I going to be doing? And she was like, 
it's a surprise you're gonna love it just oh. show up at trail dust town which is this uh <laughs> it's this little wild west town in tucson arizona and uh show up here on saturday and i showed up and it was a wild west stunt show and they were doing their uh, tryouts and uh long story short i wound up uh, i wound up making the cut and i was with them for i think two years three years something Wait, like that. real real quick what kind of stuff did they have you do for the tryout is it like jumping oh. across buildings and stuff it was no they they <laughs> did at the very end uh what they did is they had this thing it's called a, most of it is more like a boot camp it was more like all right we're gonna check like your fitness and then right, we're yeah, gonna okay. check like your performance or you you know and i had done little bit of acting i was i I, like i said the pro wrestling yeah i I had a love for entertainment from a young age so you know i would i'd mess around and stuff with my friends we'd make little movies but you know they check your uh your performance and be like all right can this guy make a convincing cowboy or whatever it was that they wanted you to be at the time right uh, then at the very end they started doing a couple of like the stunts and seeing if you could actually handle the stunts and the triple is this one it's i think probably the most famous one that they do and it's uh the top of the saloon is like i think four four stories three or four stories up and you get shot usually or pushed or blown up with dynamite or something (laughs) uh off the top of that saloon and you fall down you smack onto a roof below you you roll off of that slam down onto another roof below that (laughs) And then you fall off of that and it's like a i think it's like a nine foot drop or something like that uh onto the street below wow wow and that is uh that is the triple and that's the big one and so oh what i think they did for that that first like test is they have you do the fall from the very top um not do the whole rest yeah of the thing, right but do that initial thing because that's gonna that's gonna kind of weed out the people who right. are afraid of heights break. Yep. yeah and uh I uh, fortunately don't have that uh, fear necessarily. I have a healthy fear of heights yeah. as any normal person, but yep. not enough right. to, uh, you know. So anyway, so I wound up signing up with them and it was, you know, two two years, I think, before I wound up, I got an injury, unfortunately, that kind of took me out of it. And it's always the stupid stuff. It was, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's kind of the go-to. They had a stunt called the stair fall. And I, I wound up getting an injury going, oh. you know, falling down some stairs. So <laughs> when ever, ever anyone asks me about the injury, it's like, oh, I fell down some stairs. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and like nobody takes you seriously until you are actually in charge of falling down a set of like solid wooden stairs. Yeah. You don't realize how bad those stair falls are. Oh, man. Are. I bet. When I see them in the movies, it's like, you know, I, I, I sympathize with those guys every time i climb a staircase now it's always like yeah. the back of my mind i'm like yeah i could fall down that right yeah <laughs> oh man well, but, how, uh, how do you even how do you even like control that on the way down like or really any well, of that's, this stuff that, you... that's that's the whole thing i think that's why there's stump people because yeah. they they can figure out the way to fall right and that's, can, yeah. that's a lot of the importance is one of the most important things is we had uh what's called an armadillo and it's basically it's like a uh a motorcycle spine protector um, and yep. that is the biggest thing with going down the stairs is if you get like the wrong angle if you get one of the edges of the stair between your vertebra you yeah know, that's bad bad news um but aside from that it's really just i i don't want to say you just kind of wing it or roll with it <laughs> because it's that's absolutely not true hmm. there is there is a technique to it but it is hard to explain and i think just one yeah. of the most important parts is you just realize that your shoulders are always going to hurt afterwards a little bit mm. because that's what you have to you know you're yeah. never rolling straight over the back of your head or of your neck yeah right your knees are depending on how big the stairs are <laughs> your knees yeah. might get <laughs> yeah. banged up. you're always going to get banged up but you figure out what parts are the best to get banged up yeah right. after you're doing it for a long time it's like you know you you get it down to muscle memory um right. but there's always something, you know, yeah. I feel like anything like that, you're always kind of, it's always gamble. It's always a, a game of roulette. And fortunately, when you've got people who are training you well, which they did, 
Um, and I'll, I'll actually, I'll give them a, a little shout out. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. The, the, the heck with me. Sure. Um, the Pinnacle Peak Pistoleros, and they're still performing, uh, still performing at Trail Dust Town. Cool. Um, and they're, they're awesome. They're absolutely fantastic people and really great stunt people. Um, wow. But yeah, so when you got the right training and uh, you do it a thousand times, eventually something's going to go. And uh, I wound up uh, messing up my shoulder uh, and kind of the, the final straw. Uh, I knew something was off. And uh, the last last thing that I, I did before I really messed it up was it's called a Pratt fall. And that's where, yeah. you know, you see like some dude gets clotheslined. His feet come straight off the ground. Oh, yep. Slams on the back or whatever. Straight on yeah. his back. Yeah. And uh, that was one I, I learned in martial arts is, you know, if you ever get knocked off your feet, the most important thing is you distribute the energy, the yeah, force, right. the impact. So you smack out with your arms. And unfortunately, I had torn my rotator cuff Oof. and I knew something was up. And I, I in hindsight, maybe shouldn't have done that or I should have. Oh, but you kept it, going. But, yeah. But yeah. And I was thinking, like, it's just a little like it's not going to it's not it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, and then I did that and I heard a pop and it was uh, it was a tear a ligament up there or something. something yeah. Like um, so the it was the the rotator cuff and the labrum, which is basically like so you got your shoulder joint like this. You got the yep. cartilage on the inside that holds it like this. So basically mine uh, that that cartilage that keeps it in there is just kind of doesn't really hold it. It doesn't attach oh. anymore. It, doesn't, oh, it doesn't hold it in anymore. Oh, um, man. Do you ever have problems like have you have since then have you ever like dislocated your shoulder or sublocated yeah. it? Unfortunately, yeah, I've dislocated yeah. a handful of times. But that was that was the big thing is you know I did the physical therapy and they were like yeah. the, the goal of the physical therapy is to make it so that you know the other muscles around it compensate. Yes. And I can always tell at this point if I'm like you know lifting something up and I'm keeping all my muscles tense, it's no problem. All right. Yeah. As soon as yeah, I like that, relax that I have to worry, but yes, I, I dislocated my left shoulder really bad oh. swinging a golf club and it, you know, it's out. And ever since then, if, like if I, if my range of motion gets anywhere up here or outside of my shoulder length, Upper I just know one wrong move and it's going to come out again. Ooh. Ooh. Sucks. Yep. 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 I don't like that. Yeah. And that was, that was one which, uh, thank God that, like I said, the stunt folks, they're, they're just great people. Yeah. yeah. And the director of the stunt show, it happened one day when I was, I wasn't even doing stunts. I was carrying a box and it was just like a oh. stupid box backstage. And I was sitting there and I was just like, Oh, I just want to put this thing down, but I got to wait for, you know, someone to clear out the spot. So I'm just sitting there holding it. And I made the mistake of like relaxing my shoulders. And then all of a sudden I just pop. Yes. Like, oh, it's the no. worst dude. It's the worst feeling. So, so uh to to keep this going yeah, yeah. <laughs> going full circle Tangent. so i decided at that point i was like you know i'd rather get paid to be the guy who's not getting punched in the face or pushed down the stairs and all that other stuff and uh fortunately the uh, the directors jerry and heather woods um they they were super supportive of me uh and they they said you know we think that you've got a chance like you know you we really feel like you could make something uh in the entertainment field and you should go pursue it and that was uh that was i know not an easy thing because they didn't have a ton of uh they didn't have a ton of people at the show at that point um but hearing them kind of give that push and then kind of getting the green light of my parents being like all right well you can always go back to law school <laughs> and uh wound up making the move uh, to Los Angeles after doing a little film work in Arizona, building up the resume. And when I got my first feature, uh, that was that was really, I think, my first chance to fully move out to Los Angeles. And uh, I just stayed there and stayed there for seven years. Wow. I think. Yeah, seven, eight years um, doing almost exclusively film stuff uh, up until the very end of it. And my my agent at the time, they had been asking if I had any interest in voiceover. And when I was younger, I just I had this I had this idea that voice actors were normal, you know, film television actors who couldn't make it in film and TV. Uh, uh. So they went into VO. And I so I had always had this preconceived notion of it being almost like, uh, well, if you go into voiceover, you're giving up on your you know uh. other career. And so I just kept pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. And uh, 
after I met my wife and we were kind of talking about the future and talking about the potential of like, you know, well, where do we like, where do we go from here? What are the next steps in like our relationship? And uh, film is just, it is something that is very, very, very difficult to do if you are not in a city that is filled with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is one thing right now. Los Angeles is the, you know, it's Hollywood. It's the, it's the film capital for a reason. Right. There's so much work out there. And that's also kind of the double edged sword because there is so much work, but there is also so much competition out yeah. there. Right. And, uh, that's why I think places like Atlanta are, uh, are booming so much right now, where you've got oh. a ton of work and not quite as much, uh, not quite as much competition to go around. And so you don't need to have, you know, a big, uh, big, huge credits next to your name necessarily to get in those same rooms that you would need to be, you know, at least yeah. a B lister to get into in Los Angeles. Um, and there are more and more places like that opening up, I think. For as bad as the pandemic was, uh, it it did kind of shift around some things in the industry and presented more opportunities for people who don't have those kinds of opportunities where they were living. So anyway, so at that point in time, I was really I was like, all right, well, if I am going to wind up moving somewhere else, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to give it a shot, see, see if I can kind of prep myself, get involved with, you know, voiceover and just be prepared. And I did, uh, I agreed to do a, a commercial for my agent, a voiceover commercial. And I auditioned for it. I got it. And they, you know, cast me, brought, had me come into the studio. Cause at that point I didn't have a studio and they were the nicest people. Uh. They were just, they were just the coolest, most down to earth people, like so laid back, so easygoing, so just kind. And that was something that being in the film side of the industry in Los Angeles for so long was really, it was not, not always the case. And I can't even say not, you know, often the case. Right. Yeah. And so it was just, it was a very different type of, uh, type of work and type of, uh, you know, type of people within that element of the industry. And it kind of gave me pause because I was like, wow, well, maybe there is something like maybe there is something to this and then the commercial went through and i uh it was a nice commercial and i was like i don't know what i've been thinking all this time <laughs> right you know, yeah. like, the people are nice the work is fantastic the you know the pay is is depending on what you're doing the pay can be phenomenal yeah right um and you can do this from now the comfort of your own home yeah most yeah. of the time you don't have to be off on a set somewhere for months at a time or fly to europe for this or show that's fly to europe on. for this thing yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's like especially for the life that i wanted to live which is i want to be i want to be a family guy you know yeah. i want to be a husband to my wife i want to be a father for my kids and you you have trouble doing that um when you're when you're having to constantly be away yeah. Right. Um, and so it it just it opened up a whole new world of uh of options to me. And so I was like, well, I I see that voiceover is a really cool thing to get into now. How do I like where do I go from here? Hmm. And uh I used to go to the the conventions like Comic-Con, WonderCon, you know, all those things. Yep. Back in back in the day before I had a 1-year-old and uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before pandemics and stuff. Um and there was an audiobook narrator there. They had a panel with it was a uh, promo guy. It was Jim Cummings, the uh, the you know animation voice of Winnie the Pooh and oh. uh, all of your other like beloved childhood. Yeah. And then uh, an audiobook guy. And I wish I could remember who he was because he was fantastic. And uh, he was talking about you know kind of the way that he was able to get into things. And he said, really, if you're looking for the best place to to enter into this field and you're looking for the best way to, to hone your skills and, uh, and build your repertoire audiobooks are, that is the recipe for it is, it is everything that you're looking for to really get yourself prepared for a, you know, full, full-time career in voiceover. And, uh, he stayed behind afterwards and I actually got to talk to him for like 10, 15 minutes oh. and 
yeah. And he kind of directed me in that direction and uh, towards ACX and kind of explained the process and what I was going to, you know, what I was going to be looking at over the next handful of years. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that was it uh, from that point on, I think from, from my first uh, audition on ACX, it has just been uh, voice voiceover has been the career. It is shifted, uh, shifted entirely now where I, I still love film. I have uh, plans. I certainly have plans to, uh, to, continue it but at this point you know voiceover has really become the primary and uh and film's gonna have to really really work hard to yeah. catch up to it so yeah so that's kind of the journey of how i how i got here that's awesome like, you you yeah. mentioned uh acx is most of your work through acx or i also saw uh podium on there and a whole bunch of other stuff you know, it used to be when I was starting out, it was it was almost exclusively ACX. That was, you know, kind of getting my footing and figuring yeah. things out. But the more you figure things out and the the better you get at doing what it is right. that people, you're training to they do, notice, you know, people, you know, people start reaching out. And that is something that I've been really, really fortunate is, you know, now I've I've been able to work with Podium. I've been able to work with uh, Penguin Random House and, yeah. you know, uh, all pretty much all of all of the ones that I grew up like reading their books yeah. as a kid. And it's like, that is just such a cool thing to be able to do. And that's, that's kind of the shift that it's been recently is uh, a lot less of the, you know, ACX work and a lot more of work coming from just word of mouth or, or production companies yeah. reaching out. It's uh, it's very flattering. It's, it's super cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, well, let's see, where do we want to jump to? We should probably jump a couple questions ahead. Let's, let's talk about, um, let's talk about your studio real quick. Cause I saw a picture of that on your website. Um, and it made me think, do you, do you master all your audio yourself or do you send that off to someone or, or are you kind of a one man show? <laughs> It depends. Uh, I I offer to be a one man show. Um, that's that's something I've I've got uh, a little bit of a nitpicky ear for for audio. Mm, okay. So personally, it's like, man, if I have the time, I would love to just go through and and make, make it, it how you want it. Yeah, how I want it to yeah. sound. The reality is, you know, it doesn't happen quickly necessarily. Right. Yeah. Particularly when you're doing long form stuff like audiobooks, you know, I can do that. I, I tend to master my auditions and stuff when I send them in yeah. just to make everything, you know, sound crisp and clear when you're doing it with an audiobook and you're doing it across like, you know, eight, 12, 20 hours of, yeah. uh, of audio. That's a lot of extra time. And so I offer it. Um, but most, uh, most authors don't necessarily take me up on it because yeah, it is, uh, it is time consuming. Yeah, it is yeah. time consuming. Um, and so usually I wind up having to kind of, uh, it used to be outsourcing to, you know, to other people. Um, but now most of the time it is actually, you know, production companies, they have their own in-house people. For uh, sure. Yeah. You just send and, it over and they. So, yeah. So I just, I clean up, yeah. up the audio. I do my, my like, just because I can't in good conscience send over audio that I haven't at least like done a little past yeah through. yeah yeah um just because i know some of that stuff just drives me up the wall um so as long as you know as long as i do that i send it off to them and then they can do with it whatever they want but uh yeah, right yeah i love i love doing the mastering stuff it's it's super fun and i enjoy kind of figuring out how to make uh whatever performance it is sound as good as i can get it um right. because i mean god knows i i put a lot of work into into learning the the skill set. Yeah. But there's only so much that I can do and that's why technology is always wonderful because it can help get that yeah. last little extra oomph. Yeah. Um so yeah, so I, I love being able to do it. I know the studio uh the the studio looks great from my angle right here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> looks really nice from here, but it's just kind of like the the empty void of space behind yeah, me. On the um, on on the website, it looked huge. It looked like yeah. it's a big space. It is. Fortunately, you know, fortunately, I've got, uh, I've got uh, a lot. Oh, of yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I've, I've got a, a decent chunk of space in here. And, you know, the walls are, walls are 
big enough for me to stretch out. Nice. That was the one thing that I insisted on is when I was building the studio is like, I want, I don't want to feel like I'm in a box. Yeah. I did that when I was in Los Angeles and we had, I was recording from the walk-in closet of our apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like, you know, I, I had the extra layers of drywall and the sound, you know, the acoustic blankets and stuff all around. Yeah. And it just felt like I was I was in like the little hairy just trapped closet in this little under the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I would come out, I was just like, oh, the sun. I know. Um, yeah, we uh, we have we have narrator RJ Bailey on. Quite, we've had him on quite a few times. And every time he's been on it, it looks like he's just in this little box because it's like this thing that he made in his backyard. He's in it's the like, bunker. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He's in the bunker. And, uh, Oh my God. By the way, I'm sure he's watching this. Hi, RJ. Uh, But but I'm like, it's, it's gotta be claustrophobic in there. Like it's gotta be so, Yeah. you've got to get out of there and just be like, (gasps) (gasps) yeah, that's one, that's one thing. And I'm not a claustrophobic person either, but that was one thing where when I, and some people, they have the, uh, the recording booths that the like little structured booths that are, yeah. I mean, like two feet across by yeah, two feet just across. Enough to sit that, in, that's that's what his looks like. Yeah, it's like it, the walls are like right here. Yeah, and they have. I think there's a there's a company that makes things like that, and I, I know a lot of people who use them, and they're great. You know, for uh, for sound quality, they're yeah. they're fantastic. Um, but for like with the audiobook work or for video game sessions where you know you're on your feet and you're you know you're screaming into the microphone for four hours. Yeah. Um, that was just something doing it in Los Angeles was that was enough for me to just know whenever whatever I was doing next, that is a requirement is I need to have a nice big space. And the nice the nice thing with the setup that I have here is this is all like this is all the booth. Technically, all this in yeah. here, the booth so I can I can move around if I need to. I can add other things in here if I need to. Right. Um, I can. Yeah, yeah, you know, if I if I ever feel the need to dance, I can get up. <laughs> That's and dance. right. Right. Um, and then I have the uh, you know the double doors over here, and once I go out to the double doors, then I'm in my actual like the studio proper. Yeah. Um, and that is uh uh sorry, just got a message. No, you're good. You're good. That's okay. All right, there we go. But yeah, so now we've got you know the studio proper out there, and that's where. When I, you know, when I want to see the sunlight, yeah, I can see the sunlight, and I Go can out there. rain on the three days a year that it rains. <laughs> right, um, right. I've got a, I've got a quick question about your studio. Is your studio part of your house? Is it like a room, or is it a basement, separate. or is it a, a separate thing? <laughs> uh, so there, there is a, a bat cave beneath my house. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's um. This is the the third car garage. It's a detached garage. Oh, cool. And, yeah, and that was one of the things that uh, when we were house hunting, we had kind that of was important. Checklist, yeah, and that was super important because yeah. one of the things in Los Angeles that was an absolute nightmare, and some of the studios that I went to had the same issue because it's Los Angeles. Um, yeah, is you know you'd be sitting there, and all of a sudden there's you know an ambulance or you know police yeah, t- happening crazy, right outside yeah. the street. Or a helicopter circling overhead, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, this out of the other thing, and uh, that was one thing. Is I was like, I I want to be able to build it from the ground up, right. so that I never have to worry if I'm ever on a client call or you know recording session with anybody. Yep, I never have to say, uh, sorry guys, there's a police chase happening outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome, and 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 that was going to be my question was because because Spencer talked about RJ and and he. He had like a shed in his backyard that he transformed into this little yeah. studio. So wow. I just, I think it's cool. Like thinking from the point of somebody that does voice acting, like being able to set up your own perfect make it space, how you want. make it how you want it. Yeah. Get the baffling, right. Get the sound stuff, right. All that. It's just really cool. And it, it makes all the difference. In yeah, the world. it's definitely, it ain't cheap to do it right. And that's, that's something that like I would throw out there to anyone listening who is kind yeah. of, you know, in starting out in voiceover or aspiring to get into voiceover is particularly if you are looking to build yourself a really, really good home studio, do your research. It's yeah. it, it ain't cheap. Yeah. But it will make it it, it will make it, it makes worth it worth it. it. Yeah. That's right. It, it pays the dividends. It it. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, it itself. I, I work in construction and I had one client maybe three years ago who had a uh, 
she kind of had like an an office that she rented and she wanted one of the walls to be completely soundproofed um which doesn't exactly work but the more research <laughs> i did on it it was like just a just a soundproof that wall was like three thousand dollars for all the <laughs> like legit building materials that you yeah. need to actually channel the sound and do it right it was yeah. expensive and it's, it's and, crazy and she was like can't i just put like those foam things on the wall yeah. I'm like no i'm like that'll be all the hanging the egg cartons everywhere yeah. <laughs> Darn it. i'm like i'm like that'll that'll keep your sound you know contained in here but it won't keep sound yeah. from the other places yeah. coming in exactly it's so. gonna keep it from you know echoing when it gets in here right yeah. um, but you're still gonna hear whatever's going on next door yeah right that, it's a <laughs> the the figures sound right and it sucks yeah. but um, <laughs> absolutely worth it and absolutely true yeah so i i have kind of two questions in one here because i i want to get to the the bigger question which is are you an avid reader but before that i was going to ask do you mostly do audiobooks like what's the ratio of audiobooks to other voice work that you do you know when i when i started out um three years ago, it was three, four years ago, maybe. Um, it was, you know, like I said, almost it, it was 90, 90, 95% audiobooks when I first oh. decided that I wanted to take this seriously. Um, because I just at that time, it was, you know, the agent that I had, it wasn't like a voiceover specific agency. Yeah. It was just one of the guys uh, who happened to have a contact who was looking for voiceover. Um, then a couple months after I started doing ACX, the agency got an actual voiceover department. Mm. That was when I started getting more, you know, more commercial stuff, mm. um, more video okay. game stuff. And it has been, uh, it is definitely, it has flopped at this, or flip, flip flopped. It has not flopped. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it has not flopped. Uh, everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine, guys. You're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> Keep it together. <laughs> your, your agent is like, what is he saying on there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Um, but yeah, every it's it's flip flopped now, and that was uh, I think the biggest change came when uh, two two and a half years ago I signed with a, a management company slash agency. They're kind of everything uh, called ACM Talent, mm -hmm. and they are. I, I cannot say enough good things about them. They are the absolute uh, masters at what they do. All it's basically a conglomeration of agents um, who came together, and they were like they came from all of the the different you know bigger agencies, um, have a, a tremendous amount of experience, and uh, they all decided to come together, and they were like you know we want to do things differently, mm. um, and they did and so they created this uh this kind of conglomerate management slash agency uh company and they they're just incredible um i i've gotten so many opportunities thanks to them and uh now because of them uh i am i would say the significant majority of my work is actually uh is actually non audiobook work oh interesting um yeah audiobooks and it, it's unfortunate in the sense that um i didn't know that this change was going to happen i you know i i was not expecting the influx of non-audiobook work to to be so significant and so when i was doing the audiobooks predominantly it was you know i, I had a lot of uh, a lot of people who are interested in scheduling stuff. And so scheduling gets booked way, way out in advance. And so now it's kind of this uh, vicious cycle where I've got uh, a full plate of audiobook work, but the, uh, you know, the non audiobook work that keeps coming in is just making it harder and harder and harder to kind of keep up that same pace with the audiobooks, because that's one thing with audiobooks. It is, it is a a labor of love in the sense that you have to really you have to really love what you're doing mm. um because you are it is so so time consuming to do it 
if you don't care about what it is that you're reading or the story or the characters that you're reading about, it's going to come through. Yeah. Because you're, you're sitting in a booth talking to yourself for, you know, a average person, I would say doing it for finished uh, per finished hour, you should expect probably three times, you know, three times, four times what you're getting by the end of the book. That's how much yeah, wow. goes into it. Yeah. That's um, what we heard. And, you know, and the more you do, the better you get at it. But at the same time, it kind of just changes where you're putting that time into. It doesn't take me as long to cobble together uh, audio these days. Yeah. But it takes me longer to sit down and say, all right, why is this character having this? Mm -hmm. You know, what is what is the motivation here and how can I portray that in a way that feels like it's like it's genuine, like it's, yes. it's, it's real? Um and so it just kind of changes where that that difference of time is. And so, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. And if you don't love what you are doing, mm. people are going to hear it. It comes through in the performance. It comes through in the voice. And I hear it all the time in other narrators um, where it just it feels like someone is it, it feels like it is a labor, like a chore right. for them. Yeah. Um, you know, that that is absolutely so true. And I've often thought about like, I wonder if this whoever's narrating this book that I'm currently listening, because Gabe and I only do audiobooks. I, I read physically occasionally, but not a good 99% of what I listen to is audiobooks. And I often wonder, like, I wonder if the narrator enjoyed this story because yeah. I'm I'm not. And <laughs> and so like, you know, I I feel like as a reader, you can really tell if the narrator is just not into it. And if they're kind of phoning it in, there's been a lot of books that people have recommended to me saying, this is a fantastic book. And then when I get into it, the, the narrator is just super kind of milk toast and just kind of blah. And it's like, I don't know, you, you can't get into the audiobook if the narrator yeah. isn't at least a little into it. Yeah. Um, and then you look at, um, God, I'm forgetting the name of the guy that read the Red Rising books. Ooh, but he, uh, dude, he, he literally cries. It's either the second or the third book. He cries while he's reading it. And it's like, he That's loves, what you need. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he loves these books. Yeah. And dude, when, when he cries in that book, he was the, like, I you was, cry, right? I yeah. was crying, yeah. exactly. Dude. Oh dude. my God. Exactly. And, no, it's... Uh, and so it's so powerful. It's such a powerful medium and it's such a, just a really cool way to hear a story. And we talked about this with RJ maybe two or three weeks ago where you know there there's so many people that don't read because it is kind of a chore like even for yeah. me like sitting down and physically reading a book is a chore yeah and there's a whole past couple generations that just didn't read and now that audiobooks are becoming more and more of a thing yeah. you're you're seeing this whole new generation like people that are younger than me and like my age all those kind of people they're all getting into audiobooks. Everybody's getting into fantasy. It's completely blowing up. Yeah. And so it's, it is kind of interesting to see audiobooks become this beloved thing where 10 years ago, they used to be on CDs. They yeah. weren't even on your phone. They were on, no. you, had, you had to yeah. go, you had to order the CD and have it shipped to your house yeah. so that you could listen to an audiobook. Um, so yeah, exactly what you were saying. It's, it's awesome to see narrators really, really get into it. Yeah. And that's, that's to me, that's the thing that I, I really try. Uh, I don't have a beautiful voice. Like, you know, Anthony Hopkins could read me the dictionary and I would be enthralled. Yeah. yeah. The dude does not have to do a thing. <laughs> like, you know, Morgan Freeman, you got, you got a handful oh, yeah. of those folks out there who just, you know, have Ving Rames, you know, you, you just, you can listen to them reading anything and it doesn't matter they don't have yeah. to do anything with their voice i do not have that so what i what i really try to do myself is you know i i was an actor first and foremost and that's what i try and bring to the narration is performances yeah the most important thing for me and particularly of the characters um i think that that is when i listen to a story the easiest way for me to get 
pulled out of the story is to feel like whatever I'm hearing, you know, the characters that I'm listening to aren't experiencing what they're supposed to be experiencing. And that's something right. that, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a personal choice. I think there are a lot of people out there who prefer the kind of like grandpa telling stories around the fire where, you know, you're kind of getting that muted, uh, that slightly watered down rendition of everything. Right. And I think there, there are a ton of people who prefer that more even balanced kind of storyteller tone. And that's like a, just like a Simon Vance. I, you know, I, I wish I could say that I know more okay. of his stuff. I, so I don't want to, I don't want to categorize him off of just the few, uh, <laughs> few things that I have listened to of him, but I know sure. his name. I know he's extremely prolific. Yeah. Um, but you know, there are a handful of, uh, of narrators who I think that is kind of their bread and butter. And that's just, that's just not me. That is not, uh, that is not my style for me. Yeah. When I read a story, I am. I'm watching a story. I'm I'm living the story in my head, and that's kind of how I want people to be able to experience the the audiobooks. If I'm performing, is right. I want them to be able to, if they close their eyes, they can hear a cast of characters who are yeah. experiencing whatever it is that they're experiencing. I think um, I've seen a handful of people uh, who one one book in particular that I uh, I did recently where some of the, uh, there were a couple critiques and, uh, you know, some of the critiques are of the mindset of, you know, I, I just felt like it was, it was, you know, it was way too dramatic. You know, there is just way too much, uh, way too much like emotion and, and all that stuff. Hmm. And for me, I not the perfect actor. I'm, I'm going to make bad choices. I'm sure. Uh, sure. and so I can't say that I was not, uh, overdramatic, but in my head, uh, when you have people who are losing things that are the most important things in the yeah. world, when you have characters who are, um, God knows, the Threadlight books had yes. a lot of yes. uh, a lot of emotion in them. Um, you have people who are losing children, losing parents, losing other, you know, loved ones, um, losing themselves, and. To me, being able to convey those things to the to the degree and at the magnitude that I would feel that, you know, mm. and now especially being in a position where I, I have a daughter now, I, yeah. I have a wife, I have parents who are getting older who I worry about, you know, all the time, um, you know, kind of being able to tap into some of these experiences for me and how deeply that would affect me, that's the sort of stuff that I want to be able to convey to people. Um, and in the, you know, opposite side of that coin, the, you know, the levity when people are experiencing joys and, uh, you know, and, and happy things happen yeah. to them, particularly when they're coming from such dark places. For real. And they can laugh for a second or, you know, if like I, that, yeah. if I can, yeah, if I can make someone kind of like laugh and cry with me in, you know, in a story, then I feel like I'm doing my job because that's, you know, that's what I am feeling myself when I read these stories. And I imagine that that's being, you know, being in the writer's chair. I imagine that's what they're doing. You know, they're, they're agonizing over every single word, you know, pouring their blood, sweat and, and literal tears onto the pages. And if I am not at least trying to do it justice, I feel like I'm doing them a disservice. Mm -hmm. Um, and doing a disservice to all the people who are looking to listen to this story and like in all its uh, in all its glory yeah but don't have the time to be able to sit down and read every single page and create it for themselves in their own minds so it's like for me audiobooks are kind of that that middle ground where it's like i can't i can't paint the picture as beautifully in your head as you can but i'm going to damn well try that's right um, that's so right. <laughs> Man, that's amazing that, man Here, hearing yeah. the yeah hearing the passion when and, and we've heard rj's talked about this too and stuff and it just really makes me feel good about not only just listening to audiobooks but but listening or hearing what is put into them and the mm. dedication um it's just it's just powerful and it makes me happy that i do listen to audiobooks because i like i used to love reading i haven't read in a while but exactly what you were saying like hearing the 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 level of emotion that goes into some of these 
these audiobook readings are just like really next level and they make you seem like the person is screaming and crying you know what i mean it's like just very powerful and very real and very raw um and that's that's what i like about you know narrators so i think that's really awesome yeah that's that's really cool i'm really glad that you that you have that outlook on it that's that's kind of exactly how how we view it obviously we're not narrators or anything but that's like you know, kind of how we think about it too. Is you're just this, you're who uh, we're reading for, so that's a big deal. Yeah, for us. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, and it, it really is just amazing, man. Have you uh have you listened to much uh, Nick Podell? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have yeah. listened to Nick Podell. I love Nick Podell. Yeah. Um, he is a he is a huge name in the industry for a reason, and yeah, I think that was actually the first, probably the first like full like big audiobook uh that I that I listened to my wife was a uh, was a big fan of a uh, big fan of I think a, a handful of different fantasy series and um I believe he was he was the one who did Patrick uh, Rothfuss's yeah. uh yeah yes yeah. yes um which the uh the first book um oh my gosh uh why am I blanking on the name uh the, oh name of the wind was, name of the wind yeah uh, is her all time I think favorite. Awesome. Book. That's um, awesome. Awesome. Favorite it's book. a good favorite. That's to have. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Patrick Rothfuss uh is I think I I I don't know because I know we're still waiting on on the, yeah. uh, the <laughs> yeah. third book. I'm yeah. not even going to touch that one. Nope. Right. Nope. <laughs> um but uh him and Brandon Sanderson were the two who she was like I I have to introduce you to these two authors yeah. for different reasons. I think yeah. that Brandon Sanderson is just uh she you know, she was blown away by his creativity, which is something that really impressed me with Zach Argyle and the yeah. Light series, it felt very much like I was like I was reading a Brandon Sanderson novel. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, which to Zach, huge compliment. Yep. Um, yeah. Because I, you know, since discovering him now, uh, he is a phenomenal talent. Absolutely phenomenal talent. I don't know how he writes as much as he does as well as he does. <laughs> yeah. He's not human. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, Patrick Rothfuss was just, you know, talk about a, you know, modern day, modern day poet, yeah. of the American language of the, if, wow, my God, English, okay. English yeah, language. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it, it'll get edited out. Dude. Don't, don't you worry. We can edit gone. it out. <laughs> <laughs> modern day poet of the English language. Um, <laughs> and, uh, just really, just really incredibly beautiful writing and, when I heard Nick Podell doing it, it was just, you know, I, I felt like it was, I didn't feel like I was missing something, which I feel like is the problem. That's a good way to describe that. Yeah. Yeah. When you're listening to something like that in audio, it's hard not to feel like you're missing something because there's a beauty of being able to, to look at, you know, look at the words on the page and pull them into your own mind and create that beautiful image in your own head. And uh, he, I mean, he, he's flawless. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, and you can tell he has that same level of passion for yes. what he does. Yes. And it's uh, like, a, it goes, it, it comes through the work that he does. Yeah. Yeah. You should, uh, you should check out the King Stark Tidings series by Kel Cade. Nick Podell does those. Nice. And he, um, I, I think he does probably just as good a job as far as narration goes on that series as he does in the king killer chronicles man there's certain scenes that are so good even just like his narrating voice all of the emotion comes through with that and there's this one scene in particular that i always think back to it's in the second book and there's kind of like all these characters on a ship and one of them is walking down this hallway and there's another character who is who is mad at that guy and he kind of comes out of one of the rooms and he grabs him by the shirt and pushes him against a wall and he's yelling at him and nick podell is like yelling into the mic and you just feel this like animosity yeah and dude every time i get to that scene like my i just get shivers on the back of my neck i'm like it's so good Uh, that's what it's all about that's what it's all about Yeah. yeah So yeah, well, since we kind of talked about Threadlight, uh, Gabe has a question here that yeah. I want to go to in a minute. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Easy. Sorry. Easy. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I just wanted to ask, since we were talking about Zach Argyle, what was it like working with him in general on Threat? Oh man, Zach, uh, Zach was he he is like the archetypal like narr- narrator's dream of an author to work for. Uh he he was wonderful. Uh he was he was absolutely wonderful. One of the biggest things for me is because of because I am as strapped for time uh, for audiobook recording as I am, I, I, I request a lot of help with pre-production because mm-hmm. that is something for me, you know, there's some, there's some narrators who have the time to be able to pause narration for the day, send an author, you know, uh, a question if they get to something and then wait for the response. Some narrators have the the luxury of being able to read through an entire, you know, 20 hour novel yeah. before they even start recording. I am not one of those narrators, unfortunately. Yeah. So I I try to get as much uh, as much knowledge up front as I possibly can. Mm. Um, and I I think Zach was just, I mean, phenomenal. I, I have a spreadsheet uh that he sent me yeah with a it was like all of the major characters their traits uh you know their ages where they were from what you know what region uh they were born in um brief descriptions whether or not they were main characters or supporting characters side you know uh and yeah i I think even uh pictures he even sent inspiration Which, awesome. It sounds so weird, but for me personally, it is yeah. one of the most helpful things because when I see that picture, that like little inspiration picture, I instantly have and I like I instantly yeah. hear a voice in my head. And when I pair that and kind of filter it through all of the other elements of the description that he's provided, I would say 99% success rate. They, <laughs> they sound kind of how he wanted them to yeah. sound. Right. Um, and, uh, beyond that, he was just, I mean, his, he has beautiful writing. So, and that makes such a difference when you're narrating, yeah. um, a, a writer who is skilled at their craft, the dialogue flows. It is, it is easy to stay in the scene. It's so mm-hmm. easy to just let yourself kind of immerse, immerse in the, in the words, in the stories, in the scenes. And that is something that you don't get all the time uh and i am oh so happy that i get it when i do and he was one of the people who uh who had that ability to kind of write in a way that just it feels natural it feels right and uh i think one of the other things that i loved is that he was he was extremely patient i think during that time it was we were writing through the uh, we were recording through the pandemic we were recording through a move uh, mm-hmm. from Los Angeles to Arizona, recording through a house flood, uh, oh. you know, the birth of my first child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so everything under the sun. And it is it is difficult to uh, to factor all of those sorts of unknowns in to a schedule when you're yeah. recording or when you're booking out a right. year, two years in advance, which which Zach was. And he rolled with the punches and uh i know it's not always easy for an author in particular because you've kind of got timing is important and uh you know you've kind of got the schedule and he rolled with the punches and he was an absolute champ about it and uh i i would work with him any day of the week uh he was he was phenomenal um so yeah so i i personally would uh would love uh to see many more of his uh many more of his stories come out uh across the podcast across uh you know whatever avenues i might stumble upon them because he uh he deserves all the success in the world yeah it's awesome yeah, yeah. He's, he's a great guy he's he's been a really cool just person in the indie or self-pub space uh, man, he's done so much to help like other creators or other authors and stuff like that. He I mean, made... he's got like he's got a whole fund for yeah for indie authors what? that he he puts money towards for them. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the dude is like the archetypal yeah. author <laughs> yeah. that you want to work yeah. with. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. a, another reason, another reason to uh, to say he's just an awesome dude. Yeah, good on him. Yeah, yeah, good on good him. Good on him. I like that. <laughs> good I've on him. Heard, I've never heard you say that before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Ask your question, Gabe. All right, so we, we've already <laughs> talked. We've already talked a lot about this question, and so I'm gonna just gonna narrow it down to one question. And All right. within narrating different books, was there ever a series that you fell in love with, or actually read through and like thoroughly enjoyed it? Anything like that? I mean, there a, a handful. Uh, okay. There, there have been a handful. Yeah. Um, and uh, just, just because I, I don't want to make anyone feel no no you're good uh, yeah, you, i don't, you don't make even have to say which bad. ones they are I, it was just but, kind of a general yeah i absolutely have and i've i've made sure to let the authors know awesome because awesome. that's that's something that like i said you don't get it every day for sure uh, yeah. you Definitely. don't get it every day there and especially when you're doing you know as many books as uh as narrators go through yeah i know that was another question is do you read anymore and the reality <laughs> is I'm reading every day. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I, get right. to, I get to read and not record it. No, yeah, uh, right. But yeah. someday, uh, someday I look forward to being able to do that again. <laughs> but in the meantime, I, I am, I find myself very fortunate that I've gotten to work with, uh, you know, a handful of authors and you know, a handful of stories that really, really spoke to me and that yeah. were just. Uh, caught me i i don't always want to say off guard um i try not to go into uh i try not to go into anything with expectations because yeah. that just it colors your experience yep. i try and go in as a blank slate but there have been a handful that uh as as neutral as i have tried to you know as a neutral party as i've tried to remain have just really blown me away and uh mm. you can't help but get more invested and just put you know more more of your heart into it and uh it's it's incredibly cool and then then it's over and then you're left with this you know big old hole in your heart just emptiness like, yeah how what do i do yeah <laughs> for gotta sure. wait gotta wait for the you know the the sequel to the sequel to the sequel <laughs> um so yeah but i i've been really fortunate and i'm i am so so glad that i've gotten those that's awesome and then I, I have one more question. Well, not one more. I think, I don't know who knows, but so when, when you're working with, uh, an author and I'm sure this varies depending on the author, but are there, are authors very specific about the way they want it? Do they give you kind of a creative license? Do you just bounce back and forth with that or <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is all yeah, over the place. That's kind of what I figured it would yeah, be. It is all over the place. I wish that I could say it was more one than the other. Yeah. Um, because they both they both have the pros and cons, and it's yeah. like when you've got a really really sp particular author. Yeah. The great thing is, you know, in in the case of uh, like Zach, I don't want to say he was the most particular author that I've ever but worked. But he with. he knew he, what he wanted to hear. He knew what he, he wanted. Yeah. And, and yeah. He he said he was. He he said that he was really particular about <laughs> red light when we had him on. <laughs> he was, you know, he was particular. But like I said, far from the most particular I've worked with, he and he hit that balance that I look for. And that's why I use oh, him cool. as the example when, when other authors are asking like, well, how would we like to handle pre-production? And I basically just screenshot Zach and send it over like, and send it over. <laughs> and he's awesome. the example that I use. And I'm like, this, this, <laughs> this is what I do, need. If yep. you can do half of this, <laughs> it, it will make me a very happy man. Um, yeah. So he hit that right balance of being particular, but not, like not overly uh not yeah, over not overbearing, overbearing. Yeah. not overbearing um and i think that he was really open minded when it came to you know if i made certain character choices uh he was he was very comfortable i think if there was ever one that was like i don't know if this character sounds like 100% right um but also kind of saying like yeah i actually i like how you i like how you interpreted this one and just made it made it very very easy on my end uh because he laid out what he was looking for and there was very little room with as much information as he gave me there was very little room for me to go go freakishly wrong with someone that yeah. uh, that he had written right so okay. that was that was like the ideal but if you have people who go a little bit further than that then you have things where it's like, well, you know, the way that the way that you did this, uh, I'd like you to, you know, change the inflection on this or, you know, change, oh. change this little thing, change this little thing. And there is 
there's there's like a there's a, an amount of wiggle room that I I try and always give everyone. Yeah. Uh, is at the end, I am I am willing to fix anything that I messed up on. Mm-hmm. I will fix no problem. That's on me. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like those subjective things, I want authors to be really really happy with their work. Yeah. yeah. I want to get it right, and that's why I try so hard to get as much information up front as I can. Even things like uh, foreshadowing. You know, mm-hmm. if you want a character who is going to make a villainous turn later on in the series arc if you want those undertones of just like you know make his voice something that you can't quite put your finger on but his delivery just has a little subtle undertone of sinister you know there's just something that you don't quite pick up but when you get to that point when you get to that big reveal yeah you're like listen back and you're like i hear it you know it's the foreshadowing it's hard it's harder to do when you know you're just listening but it's something that I try and factor in. And so you have a certain degree of wiggle room that I try and give everybody. Um, but you also run that risk of when you're being super particular and you've got a, you know, 15, 20 hour book. That's a, that can really add up time wise. Yeah. Like that I just, I, I don't have that kind of time to be able to get it a hundred, hundred percent every, every single time. As much as I would love to say I, I've got good intuitions, um, I, you know, you you read enough books and you start to kind of understand that there's a flow to things and there's, yeah. uh, you know, you start to be able to read between the lines a little better. But I'm certainly not psychic and uh, God, it would be great if I was. <laughs> yeah. That would be wonderful. Then the flip side, though, is you also have authors who are just like, just do your thing. Yeah, do it whatever. Or go for Just it. Whatever. I don't care. Pronunciations, who needs them? <laughs> um, nice. And so the only problem with that is like every character that you get to, you have to figure out like, okay, how am I going to approach yeah, this? Yeah, then you have to do where some more at? of the work, right? Where yeah. They, like, where are they from? Are they going to be like a major player? Who are they going to have scenes with later on down the line? Like, what's that would make story? me nervous. And it, it's always a little bit of a risk when yeah. you're coming from that approach of like, I don't have the time to get to read through the whole thing and take notes beforehand. So kind of flying by the seat of our pants and knock on wood, uh, I haven't. I haven't shot myself in the foot too bad yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it comes both sides of that. Yeah, call. definitely. Equally dangerous for different reasons. For sure. Nice. Well, we are quickly approaching the end of our time here. I know you got to go pretty soon. I wanted to make sure that we kind of went through these uh, these final questions here. If that's absolutely. okay. Do we have time I've, for that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I've got, I've got one that's not on the final, a quick one that I want to ask you. Yeah, go for okay, it. I do too. Go ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, you, guys are, you guys are fine. You guys okay, are fine. Okay. So right. uh, this, the last question we have on this thing, um, it, it's talking about narrating women's voices. Or oh, yeah. This is a good question. Other other voices. Um, men typically have a little bit more of a difficult time making women's voices, right? It makes sense. Um, and so what's your – do you have a problem with that? Or is it something that just you can do? Yeah. I I have heard and I was warned ahead of time a uh, long, long time before I started even, I think, doing like the romance narrations is like one of the big pet peeves that people have is and I, it was from a, a woman. Mm-hmm. And so extra taking it to heart uh, is she's like when men do women with these high squeaky voices. And yeah, that's like, yeah. And that's that's how they think all when they don't do anything like there's, there's <laughs> yeah. no other effort aside from they just talk like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that was one that I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not ever going to do that. Not going to do that. Um, And so I, uh, I just started trying to listen to kind of the nuances of, uh, you know, different, different women, different actresses uh, and, you know, women in my life and listening to the nuances of, you know, what kind of sets apart their speech from others. And it's very similar to how um, happens a a lot in anime, but also just animation in general. Mm. You tend to have a lot of women, uh, grown grown women playing younger males. Yeah, um, mm. yeah. Ash Ketchum. Ash Ketchum, perfect yeah. example. Um, you know, Tommy Pickles, uh, and you know all of the all the uh, you know Rugrats kids. Mm-hmm. Um, what they do is, and I I I got to listen to E. G. Daily uh, talking about you know her experiences doing this stuff. Um, 
and you know you hear those nuances in what differentiates kind of the way that the a typical male speaks from the way a typical female speaks and certain very nuanced uh, inflections and things like that um and so i started really trying to listen to that um and incorporate that into the female characters that's something that in animation and commercials i'm never getting paid to voice a woman yeah ever. i yeah. hope mm. to god i never get paid yeah. to voice a woman because i'm sorry for that woman um, <laughs> but uh that's something that with audiobook medium you get a lot of freedoms in the audiobook uh in, in the audiobook realm that you'll never get anywhere else yeah so you get to practice and it's almost like a personal challenge of like i at yeah. least for me i want to be able to do these you know certain types of voices well i want to be able to voice a female at least somewhat convincingly um yeah. where someone where someone can say like it sounds like it sounds like a lady and it's not making me want to punch him in the face um yeah. which is you know and it's the same thing with you know ethnicities and things like that where you know you are you're the only person telling this story and you've got to do everyone within it justice right and uh so it's it's a personal challenge to be able to try and learn to do all of those uh well and for me particularly with the with the women it is it's just the the nuances of the way that they speak yeah and you know trying to uh trying to really capture those small details um and yeah that's uh that's really the only thing is it's it's very subtle and yeah it's and the cause... subtlety that i i think and i i hope does come across as kind of that that winning combination it it does and and the reason why i ask is because there's like you know we listen like spencer said a ton of audiobooks that's all that's all that i listen to is audiobooks and so there's only been a couple voice actors that like really stood out in that section you nick podell jeff daniels and i think one other one where it was like it was very much like that is perfect that's exactly yeah. what i want it to sound like um, and it's it's really well not to just toot your horn but i'm just saying I, well like, no i was gonna you know, say heck, hearing, <laughs> hearing my name up with those guys it's like all right I'm, yeah no no I'm it's, happy. It's, it's awesome man it, it really is impressive thank and you we, so much and yeah. we we talked about it too when uh zach argyle came on and we were getting into Threadlight. um especially i noticed chris's mother and his wife i forget yeah. i forget his wife's name but willow that was yeah willow, willow yeah and iris i think yeah willow um, and iris both of them sounded so good and there was i and again i don't know what the difference is but there was some sort of difference between the mother and his wife one definitely sounded older like just a, just like a little older and one sounded a, a yeah. little bit younger like chris's age and uh, i just thought that was cool i thought i i've always been fascinated with not necessarily voice acting although in recent years that's become the main thing i've been fascinated with but even like singing and just just yeah. diff different ways people can use their voice to create a certain effect it's always really fascinated yeah. me so stuff like that is just really really cool i mean it's uh, yeah it's it, it is to me uh in the voice acting world it's like i hearing those different facets in other industries where people are able to use yeah. that as as a tool we're uh kind of fanning about the the elvis uh elvis movie earlier yeah. um and that was that was one where you know watching the emotion and the heart that can be conveyed yeah with the voice alone is just it's, it's incredible and uh and you can make that as bold or as subtle yeah as you need to and as you want and uh yeah so that's a that's a huge huge uh compliment thank you very much yeah for sure um yeah it's it's not uh it's not something that i that is learned overnight it's definitely something you know i've been working on for a long time and i'm gonna be working on it for a long time to come but again i'm, I'm glad to hear that it's uh that it's getting there and that's that's the track that i want to be on yeah for sure well, I have two kind of rapid fire questions before we go into like our final thoughts here. Uh, one of them could even be a yes or no question in the Wrangler series that you did. Oh, yeah. You do a Southern accent throughout the whole thing. You're narrating like the actual like narrating voice is a Southern accent throughout the whole thing. 
was that hard to maintain for an entire book? Because I, I think like most, most narrators, they probably just use their like normal voice or like a skewed version of it. Was it hard to do an accent the whole time? <clears throat> well, uh, that actually wasn't a no accent. <laughs> uh, this is how I talk normally. <laughs> <laughs> the I, other one's the accent. That's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, exactly. is, this is my put on. That's um, right. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, I, I, I'm a big fan of Sam Elliott, and he was the inspiration for the narrative oh, okay. voice. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, that's one of the things is uh, I like to approach the books. There aren't a ton of my books that I can think of, and usually not by choice. Like I said, I, I love the character work. I love being able to, you know, get into the performance as characters. And so uh, for narrating in my normal speaking voice, is really not my favorite and i will oh. avoid it at all costs if there's any if there's yeah. any way to do it yeah um because i just i feel like i when i hear my normal speaking voice coming back to me like, <laughs> i could see it, that right? yeah i can't totally. just it, dry, totally. it drives me crazy it's like nails on a chalkboard yep. it's like watching yourself in the film world that's it's like, right it's like hearing yourself in a video and you're like god i sound so and weird it's like, why do i sound so weird what <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is that where am i uh, from yeah um but when i get a chance to do a, a character throughout that is something that i just i love there was a you know there was a the wrangler series that i got to do that sort of like that awesome badass older cowboy guy yep. going through going through all those adventures which those wrangler books that's a wild ride <laughs> I, um, dude i i want to check it out and i was gonna tell you about this game because i was looking at him earlier today yeah it's yeah. it's a portal fantasy about a cowboy yep. that goes into a fantasy world and, whoa and that sounds sick he starts being the sheriff of a fantasy world that, yeah, like, that terrible. Awesome. <laughs> right up my alley that yeah. said brace yourself though uh there are he has uh he sows his wild oats <laughs> all over that fantasy world nice. that's um, awesome so, um, oh, that's hondo great. hondo jinx uh the author for <laughs> is that. that oh okay hondo jinx the uh the author he is again one of the uh <laughs> one of the nicest <laughs> people that i have ever worked with uh he is an absolute gem of a human being and nice. uh if you if you listen to if you listen to Wrangler, he's you're supporting a good guy. I will say you're awesome. supporting okay. a really good guy. Um, but yeah, like the Wrangler books got to do the old cowboy. There is one of the first uh, series that I started out with was um, oh my god, uh, is, uh, the Hitman. It was a Hitman series. Oh, cool! Um, and it was basically this retired mafia hitman uh, who decided that he had been through. He'd been through hell and back and he was going to hang up his gun and live a peaceful life. Yeah. Peaceful life doesn't exist when you've spent that. Yeah. Long time. yeah. Um, I got to read these. This sounds yeah. Awesome. What, what's yeah. that series called? Do you know? Is, oh, my God. I, I can find it. Collector. Debt Collector. Debt, Debt Collector. collector. Awesome. Okay, cool. Awesome. awesome. Sweet. Yeah. So that was uh, that was one where, you know, I got to he wanted that kind of hard boiled detective yeah. sort of voice. So, you know, I got to do the uh, the older, you know, older gentleman who's yeah. uh, he's been in the Love force. It. He's seen some things and uh, he's Love gonna it. Retell it. <laughs> so good. And, so and and like getting to do that stuff, I just absolutely love. And then um, the, <laughs> another romance I did uh, was from the perspective of a uh, a. <laughs> fabulously uh fabulously gay uh protagonist <laughs> nice and he was uh one of the most entertaining characters i've ever i've ever gotten to read for and so i got to do an entire audiobook like this and it was amazing um <laughs> that's, that's so, so cool dude. and so you know you get <laughs> so to awesome you get to go through all of yes you know all of these different characters i love it and so that's my preference is when i get to have that character in the narration as well yeah and i think i do better with those honestly because For sure. not you just, just you can just dive in man yeah i can yeah. just dive in i feel that's like so i'm cool. part of the story that's so amazing that's awesome all right you, you like you like out answered what i thought you were gonna answer oh yeah so sure. well <laughs> so good so good. well that was incredible yeah that's great <laughs>
All right, last quick one is I just had a question about Black Desert Online because it looks like you've done a bunch of video game work. I see okay, some that's, Final that's Fantasy in there. Yeah. And uh, Black Desert Online is an MMO. And I've like, I play a lot of Elder Scrolls Online. And all of those characters, all of the NPCs that you meet, thousands of them, they're all voice acted. Yeah. And so I'm curious, like, how many people are on these projects because i'm sure there's voice actors doing like a hundred voices or something but is it or like there's a... not or there's a voice actor per npc you never <laughs> know yeah. i honestly honestly i don't i don't know if there if there are regulations um i know that they use some some voice actors they'll bring in for a whole bunch of different roles i wouldn't guess that it's it's more than like a dozen or so per you know, per voice actor, though, even if they really oh, like okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that it's more than that. They've got a lot of people working on these. Um, yeah. And that's that's something that I never realized until I got into the video game stuff is how how big the the cast and crews of these productions are behind the scenes, beneath the surface that you never see until you beat the game and those stupid credits are scrolling up for and then it's just like 35 continuous. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. and you're just like it's a never-ending stream of names yeah. and now i understand because yeah. it takes so much in these games to just make them make them function um and so all those npcs You've you've probably heard a handful of people. I bet you Matt Mercer has probably voiced a good, you know, good <laughs> dozen NPC in every game ever. But beyond him, there are hundreds of other, you know, voice actors who that yeah. you know, that video game company, that production company, that casting director, whoever it is, has brought in by choice to, you know, bring them in to be a part of of this project yeah. and, you know, give them a little a little slice of the pie that uh, that <laughs> everyone is getting to enjoy by the end yeah. of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So Black Desert was one of those ones where it's massive scale wise. It's massive. And I did, I think I did probably like half a dozen, half a dozen voices for them. Um, okay. Something is somewhere around there. Sounds right. And then, um, so not to interrupt, but like for like per, per character, like w was there a character that was throughout like the whole thing that you'd voice continuously or was it just a couple like pop-ins or these NPCs were more of uh just kind of like area. Yeah. More, more okay. like area, area okay. NPCs. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I've done, I've done since then I've done a handful of, you know, those kind of like NPCs that grow yeah. you or yep. player characters. I've yep. done a handful of those, but not for black desert, but I can say that with those ones, that is a that is a relationship that you live with for for a while um yeah i got to do the the player character for saints row um one of the oh no way yeah one of the dude. yeah one of the <laughs> one of, so, so cool dude. If, you, if you jump into the uh the the one oddly enough it's the cowboy voice uh, oh, uh, okay. it's the awesome. voice so they're set in the the town of santo Aleso. yeah basically uh you know speaking with the director it's kind of like the 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 inspiration i think was kind of like a las vegas and it, this is like the newest one place. right this the one is the that new just, one, yeah. okay oh, dude that's wow. so cool that's so yeah so if you, cool, if you happen to do the uh if you happen to do i love the Saints Row. i just i haven't bought that one yet but i but i'd spend on my list i'm, I'm gonna going play to it now yeah, yeah. It's, it's some of the most fun that i've ever had recording that's awesome super, super funny stuff that's um, so cool but like for for an example of like that relationship, I've been working with them for two years now, I think, um, and still going. And yeah. you know, every every handful of weeks, or you know, when depending on if things are slow, you know, every couple months, you know, they'll get back in touch and bring you back in for you know another couple sessions yeah, and take right. a break as they get another chunk done. Um, and so those sorts of things you know you come in as a, a an npc who's just like you know village crazy guy right um, you know you're there for a session you're gonna voice a couple people and then you know give them a high five and and go on your merry way but when you're one of those that's uh that's coming in for the long haul it's a relationship that you build with these people and that's uh that was you know the the saints row team is just incredible people i love them to death that's so cool um man. 
and they're 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 so nice and so generous and so unlike anything you would expect. From, <laughs> yeah, like Saints Row. Yeah, for real, dude. Um, they're they're phenomenal, and like that's a relationship that you really keep with you as you grow in the industry, and like that's one that I hope I'll be able to work with these guys, whether it's on Saints Row or or other stuff in the future. I hope that I get to keep working with these guys for years and years to come because it is. It's like you know you start to feel like a little family and it's uh it's really yeah. cool that's nice. amazing that's amazing by the way real quick have you guys ever seen uh troy baker's list of credits it's like troy huge. baker's an animal dude he's, <laughs> he's, animal. he's done he's in several like, animals uh like, but he is himself an animal oh my gosh yeah. like there like there was a video i saw where they just like all popped up on the screen and like all these characters are just filling up the entire screen like he's done wolverine a number of times he's joel from the last of us and all these all these other it's there's yeah. so many there's so many for red the dead video, redemption yeah for the for the video game world troy baker is like the closest thing that we have to like to god king yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that is the closest thing that uh we've got because yeah. he is he is not only is he just he's super prolific you know you can tell he's just i mean he's constantly working he's worked on everything for years yeah but he is so damn good at what he does and yeah. he brings it and you know it's this guy who he can do he can do the like crazy creature zombie you know he can play yeah the walkers on the walking dead like he can play the hell out of it and he he is the most convincing zombie yeah. monster that you've ever heard yeah but then he can go and he can jump into a role like joel yeah and you're like, this dude is this dude is mastercraft in right. performance. Mm. So yeah, so he he is the closest thing that we yeah. have to the king. That's and cool. Yeah, I was, I was deserved. I was playing The Last of Us this morning, so oh that's nice. Awesome. I didn't even realize. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you should look up some interviews with Troy Baker. I will. He's like yeah. the, he's like the coolest guy ever. Yeah, he's, he's super, super cool. He, he's honestly the first time that I realized that voice actors get really really into their roles yeah uh because there was a video when he was doing bioshock infinite uh him and ashley johnson were running lines and and they're just crying and they're just like yeah. hugging each other and trying to run <laughs> yeah. lines but wow they can't amazing. get through it because they're just tearing up i'm like wow that is that is passion but speaking of troy baker we'll close this out with our final thoughts here uh, who are some of your favorite voice actors? Obviously, I'm sure Troy Baker would be one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Troy Troy Baker is a huge one. Um, I am, like I said, I'm going to blank on his name right now, and I want to make sure that I get it right. Uh, Darren DePaul. I think he started out in like Broadway or something like that. I, I don't know what his background was, um, but he came into, uh, into voiceover, and he has taken it by storm um he's the guy who he voices uh reinhardt in um overwatch thank you oh yep. cool. uh yeah he he voices That's awesome reinhardt. he does a ton of other stuff i mean the dude he's also he's also in saints row that was my first uh that's cool yeah i got to i got to uh do like you know voice voice acting across the ether uh, nice. right. with him and i mean just you hear the stories about him and he's just an absolutely incredible human being just a wonderful wonderful person phenomenal talent um and just like so he is he is absolutely up there as well um i i think from like a, a narrator perspective uh i think nicholas uh nicholas bolton is he's a big one and i don't even know if i can just classify him as a narrator because he's done so much film work as well but I, I really, really like him as a narrator. I've, I've got probably a handful more that I'm going to kick myself for. Sure. for That's for okay. Getting right now. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I made a joke earlier with Matt Mercer, but I'm going to throw him in there as well. I think he is, uh, he is also a phenomenally talented uh, voice actor. Um, and I know that he's doing his own stuff with, uh, he's doing his own stuff with like Critical Role and all that. But just uh, from like a, a voice acting standpoint, really incredibly talented human being um okay, cool. so yeah so he's another guy if you look at you know his list of uh of credits he has got a, a huge list of credits as well watching him do really anything um because i think his, his main thing nowadays i'm pretty sure he's he's like a full-time dungeon master 
Um, oh, cool. Nice. Which, what better profession for a voice <laughs> yeah. actor who is yeah, talented? Man. And so not only is he is he getting to tell stories and stuff, but he's also doing what I love to do, which is, uh, and what I hope to someday do with my own stories, uh, is bringing those characters to life. Yeah. And uh, it's it's just really, really cool. And he has just got such a plethora of characters under his belt. Um, so, yeah. So I, I'd, I'd say that's uh, that's my list for the moment. Um, cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah. You kind of blew my mind with the, with the Reinhardt thing because I, I play Overwatch almost every oh, day. Oh, yeah? You want to hear a, of Overwatch. You want to hear a, a, a cool story? And I, yeah. So I heard this from uh, the head casting director at Blizzard, which is a company that I right now that's like my my bucket list company that I yeah, want to for yeah. um I haven't gotten the opportunity yet I'm hoping that it comes someday yes um but she was telling a story about how like the the depth that she expects and that she wants from the voice actors that she works with yeah and I guess there is a um I've never played Overwatch but I I watched at her request watch this uh cinematic that she's talking about, which is like the the backstory of Reinhardt as a character. Yes, I've seen it. And she was saying that when uh, uh, when Darren was in there in the booth, that he was doing his like he was doing a performance, but there was like you know there was something that she felt like he was holding back. Um, and it is in that cinematic, there is a uh, there's a very strong element of loss and i know we were talking about how powerfully that loss has to hit you in order for that emotion to come through to the audience that you're performing it to um and she said that there was there was something that she felt like he was holding back so she sat in there and she talked with him and trying to find that emotional crossover where you can take another character's emotional state and you can kind of find a place where that syncs with your own, where you can understand where they're coming from, what they're going through. And uh, uh, like I said, a very strong element of not only loss, like very deep loss yeah. of somebody close to them, but a feeling of guilt over it being potentially their fault. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was something that she she said that Darren wound up revealing that he had some sort of similar experience in his life that he had kind of built up wow. like a little bit of a wall over yeah. oh. and she said in yeah. in the course of that session uh broke through that wall that barrier she got out of the booth he recorded the whole the whole section of the scene that that uh i'm sure you know yep recorded that whole section one take and it is when you watch it talk about a powerful yeah i'll i'll show you after this spencer yeah. i think i okay. think you'd like to see it yeah. okay cool it's talk about performance and that's the sort of thing that sticks with me and like darren DePaul, you see a lot of the other stuff that he does it's like he can be such a silly like goofy funny guy and then to hear him reach that deep and like and get into something that is that powerful it speaks it speaks volumes about him as far as uh as far as his ability and uh his talent so wow. that's something uh yeah, that's, that's something amazing else. that's yeah. a cool story man i'm glad you cool, told me that I'm that's glad a cool you told story me uh so yeah he he's the real deal he's the real deal it's amazing that's and awesome. then the other thing i was going to say is that i i hear his voice every night when i play ryan hart he says get behind me <laughs> and I put the shield out every single night i hear yep. that and i there love it oh man there you go saying it with his yep. fiction that's right yeah way better than i did <laughs> That's so great. Well, um, yeah. Heck, guys, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Be- before you go, I'll just say, what's is there anything you want to plug? Is there anything coming up uh, soon for you that you'd like to promote or anything like that? Oh man, um, I and you know what, NDAs are kind of scary. I'm just yeah, like, oh, <laughs> sure. be careful. Yeah, be yeah, careful. So yeah. I'm just not gonna. I'm You're not good. Gonna get It'll pop up on trouble. his website eventually, it's, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's stuff, and they're not even. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I if you, if anyone needs a Ford truck, I'm not under NDAs for those. <laughs> so hey, if, 
if anyone needs Ford, I've, uh, I'm doing Ford's truck month and, uh, oh, cool. <laughs> cool, and dude. doing their, uh, recruit, cool. their tech recruitment. Um, so yeah, I know I'm not, uh, I know I'm not on NBA <laughs> for that one. Um, Sweet. okay. But yeah, uh, nothing, nothing at the moment. You guys will probably find out about the same time I find out. So awesome. that's how it goes. All right. All right. <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for coming yeah. on here. Like this, this went so well. I've, I've absolutely <laughs> loved this whole conversation. Uh, you, man, when you were talking about like your passion for audiobooks. I wasn't really saying a whole lot during that time because you were actually making me tear up. Oh man, <laughs> it was phenomenal, man! Don't they... blush him too bad. <laughs> I, I I really appreciate that. That's yeah. uh, and it's it's an important thing to me too. So thank you for sure. All right, guys. Well, we are going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for hanging out with us while we chat with voice actor Adam Gold. I'll leave some links to some of his fantasy works in the description as well as his website. As always, we appreciate you guys liking and subscribing and doing all the YouTube things as it helps our channel grow. And we'd love it when you guys stick around and reach out to us either in the comments here on YouTube or on Twitter or Discord, which are both linked below in the description. Thanks again so much for watching. And until next time, I suspect Gabe will be furiously reading the Wheel of Time to figure out the lock on my basement door, but I doubt he'll get past the pit bulls. So. Good night. Uh oh. Good night. <laughs> Good night. You guys have been a blast. This was awesome. this was fantastic. So, I look forward to next time. Yeah, That's right. Dude, come on again man. anytime. And happy Super Bowl. Happy right. Super Bowl. Exactly. <laughs> Who the hell won? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. God. <laughs>